Welcome back to the next part of my Laravel series here. In the last part, we actually created the logic to sign up users, so to create a user in our database and to, to handle our sign up request we sent through this form here. So the first step to user authentication or to, to our user management is done. Now in, in this video, we're going to handle the user login. So if he already is signed up, we want to um, also implement a method for a signed up user to, to just log in with his email and his password. And we'll also redirect logged in users as well as signed up users to a dashboard page. Currently not a very pretty one, but to, uh, to another page pretty, pretty much. So let's get started. Now the first thing for our authentication to work is we need to make a little change to our user model. So let me go to my user model file here. And in here, we need to implement the authenticable contract. That's a contract provided by the Laravel framework, which basically allows us to use built-in Laravel authentication helpers, so to say, the auth class, if you want to put it that way, to easily authenticate users so that we don't manually have to check if the password is equal and so on. But we can use these handle helper functions provided by Laravel and that's a framework is all about in the end, right? So to do this, I'll implement, implement the authenticable contract and don't forget to add this import here. So use illuminate contract of authenticatable. And now we need to implement the methods, the, these, this contract or this interface, as it would be called in other programming languages, um, needs us to yeah, implement in this class. Uh, thankfully, we can use a nice little trait Laravel provides us with, namely the authenticatable trait. Now, don't mistake that with the, or mistake that for the contract we're implementing here. That's basically a trait, so uh, to put it easily, a bundle of functions uh, we can in import into any class we create and it, yeah, basically in this case is all we need to fulfill this authenticatable contract. And this is obviously no, uh, no, no surprise or no coincidence, but instead that is how authentication in Laravel works and how Laravel makes it easy for us to make any of our models, of the models we created, authenticatable. Just by implementing that contract and then using this trait here, which lives in the illuminate of namespace. And with those two changes here, with these two changes, we're done. That's all we need to be able to authenticate our user. Now we could have used any model here. We could have had a dog model, a dog PHP file with a dog model and a dog's database table. We were, would just have to implement this contract and then implement or import this trait here, this authenticatable trait, and we would be able to, yeah, to use the dog class as our user class. If we would have used another name but user, there would have been one other change um, necessary that is in our config folder in the app PHP file. Uh, here we got, where is it? No, it's in our off PHP file. It changed in Laravel 5.2. Here we got this providers area here with the users. Uh, with the driver of Eloquent, which is the driver we use here because Eloquent is Laravel's ORM, so the way to easily access database tables behind our models. And here we specify the model used for authentication when we use the auth facade, we will use that in a second, to, yeah, to access all those authentication helper methods Laravel offers us. So it is by default set to user in the app namespace, which is exactly what we have here. App folder user is in the namespace app. So this works out of the box. But if we would have dog, well, we would have to rename this to dog. Otherwise, it would be looking for a user model with the authenticatable contract implemented and wouldn't find one because our dog is the class doing this. 
So that's important, but in this case, everything's working. Just wanted to let you know that there is this additional change you would have to do if you're not using a user class. Okay, now for the talking, the user is now prepared. Let's go back to our user controller. Now, the first thing is, um, I want to automatically redirect the user to the dashboard if he signs up because then we know, yeah, he, he is authenticated, right? He is logged in. So in this case, I want to create a new view here, which I call dashboard, dashboard.blade.php. And I'll just say, Add an h1 tag here, the dashboard. We're gonna fill this with live later on. And well, we're not redirecting back here anymore, but instead I want to basically redirect to another route I will have to create, which is called dashboard. And let me create this route here real quick. So again, here in our middleware, I'm gonna create a get route here, route get. dashboard this will also use a controller functional I the user oops, the user controller at get dashboard and the name will be as I just used it dashboard don't forget to sell a semicolon so this is prepared now back here I'll Create a new function at the top, which I could just call public function get dashboard. And here all I, all I do is return a view, namely the dashboard view I just created. So we can try this out. This should already work. Um, if I enter a new name here, like, yeah, let's use test. So we need an email address here. So uh, let's use test at gmail.com. Uh, my name first name is test and the password is also test so we're creative well we got forwarded to the dashboard great now let's create our sign in logic that we want to execute when we try to sign in here first we will create the, the route we need for this so let's start in our welcome view and hook this action here up to a route which we still have to create a route called sign in in our routes folder just copying this sign up route here real quick and then I will just rename it to sign in in all three places here so this is uh, our sign in route which we set to use our post sign in function here and in this function we're now using the offset which is another one of those shortcuts Laravel ships with which allows us to easily access our authentication helper methods. We access this helper method or these helper methods through our auth facade, which we import from, from illuminate support facades, and then it's the auth facade. And here we got this function attempt. Auth attempt will try to log in a user with the credentials we provide here as argument, which will be an array of your arguments or of credentials and if the attempt fails this will return false and if it succeeds it will return true so we can basically just check this in a if condition here if of attempt so if it is successful then we want to return our redirect to our dashboard route and if it fails well we just want to return a redirect back so back to the front end screen to the starting screen so to say to our welcome view now here i'll pass an array and we want to authenticate using our email which will be stored in our request and which we can access through the email name because again this is here now welcome view what we use for a name as a name for our input field where we input the email and here for a password, we're using the name password. And therefore in my user controller, oops, I have my second parameter, which is the password, obviously. 
which I can access through the password key in my request array here. So we can almost try out if this works, but we got to do some more things. We have to add our session token here in the login form as well. This is basically the case for every form we're posting in Laravel. We always have to include this session token. Otherwise, we'll always get the, this token mismatch error message. So now let's try this out. I will create a new user here, test at yahoo.com, name test, password test. So you see I'm very creative when it comes to the names of my testing users here. So yeah, that works obviously. And now let's Let's use, let's use them here, test at Yahoo, password of test. It works too. So we can see in our user controller, um, our authentication attempt through this auth helper class or through this auth facade and the helper class attempt here, the helper function was successful. It returned true and therefore we were forwarded to our dashboard view or our dashboard route, which again returns this view here. Now let's try something wrong. Let's try yeah, a, ra a random password here. And you see we're just taking back to our welcome view. And this is exactly the behavior we want here. So this works. Now one more thing. Let's also log in the user when he signs up. Because yeah, we are redirecting to our dashboard. But currently we're not really protecting our dashboard. We could just access our dashboard by typing this right so it's it's not something we have to log in and we will focus on the logic to protect our routes soon but for now let's at least log in our user so that in theory he would be logged in we can access another helper method here the login method where we just pass our user the user we just created and this will automatically log in the user so let's again try this and I'll be a little bit more creative now. I'll use chris at gmail.com. I guess this email address exists, but doesn't really matter here. And he has a password of Chris. Submit this. And we're still forwarded. We're not getting any error. So this works. Otherwise, we would have gotten an error. And now we're technically logged in. Not just forwarded, but also technically logged in. So this is sign up and sign in. And now that we got this ready, we'll have chance to focus on additional steps. For example, we want to validate that we don't have double email addresses in our user database, right? That will be something we'll have to look at. And then we finally also want to create our dashboard and the possibility to create posts and see other people's posts. We'll do this in the next videos. See you there. Bye.